Well, we're joined now by Dr. Venkatesh Nagalapati. He's a geriatrician and president of the CFP Physicians Group. Dr. Nagalapati, great. You unmuted yourself. I wanted to remind you about that. So I want to start uh, first with this news from Eli Lilly. They're saying that that their antibody treatment is going to be needed, even though we have this news of a vaccine. Uh, I'm wondering if you can comment on that and how necessary will that antibody treatment be, even though everyone has been quite excited and, and celebrating over this news of Pfizer and, and BioNTech's uh, vaccine. So, yeah, good afternoon and thanks for having me. And I hope you guys can hear me. So, uh, so even with the vaccine showing initial promising results. Uh, a vaccine is essentially, uh, it's training your immune system to fight against a virus or a bacteria. So it is not going to be instantaneous. Uh, it, it does take a while to be effective. I know the initial reports have said it's 90% effective in lessening incidence of infection. But that being said, it, it Pfizer is not going to seek uh, what's called the emergency use authorization. They still have to go through testing to make sure it's safe in, in a wider sense. And, uh, and, and for a vaccine to be truly, truly effective, uh, in addition to lessening uh, incidence of infection, it also has to be effective in uh, preventing complications and lessening mortality after you've had an infection. So, that is, so it's a much more... Uh, involved and it, it's a longer process, which is is going to take a while. And that that being said, uh, the initial tests were good. Uh, we, we'd have to wait and see the scale of uh, vaccinations available. So hopefully, we should have a few hundred million uh, vaccine doses by end of the year, and and a uh, billion vaccine doses in 2021. Uh, and so that, that that's that's a valuable asset in this fight against COVID-19. But on the other hand, the antibody uh, therapy is entirely different. It's a lab-produced antibody, which essentially mimics your immune system's response to a virus or a bacteria. So the response time is much more, uh, it's, it, it's much shorter. So if you are exposed to the virus, if you're exposed to COVID-19 and you test positive for COVID-19, then the idea is to get a single IV infusion of the monoclonal antibody, and that immediately mimics your immune system's response to the virus. So it's it's more effective in, in mounting an adequate immune response, and in, in other words, it translates to lessening uh, incidence of hospitalizations, lessening complications if you have the COVID. And uh, again, like you mentioned, it's indicated for patients who test positive positive with mild to moderate uh, illness. And so hopefully it has to be a two-pronged two -pronged approach uh, in, in uh, dealing with this illness. So Dr. Naglapati, speaking about the antibody treatment, because that obviously would be for folks who are being hospitalized with coronavirus, and we're seeing case counts steady, steadily above 100,000 every day now for the last six days, so nearly a week. Wondering, mm -hmm. as you're looking at the case count surge across the country, do you think we've taken our foot off the gas, uh, so to speak, when it comes to this pandemic? Uh, I, I think in a way uh, we have. I, I, I think we, we, we collectively as a nation have uh, are suffering from what's called the pandemic fatigue. So, uh, so we, we kind of falsely being reassured by the fact saying, OK, though we have 100,000 new cases a day, uh, the rate of hospitalization still has not uh, is, is still pretty low. But what, what, what I feel is uh, the, the rate of hospitalization is going to go up in a couple of weeks from now, because that's when the most severe illness shows up and that's when the complications show up. So. Uh, it's it's we, we, we we'll that, love... Dr. sorry to interrupt you I, because i want to ask you about this we've seen hospitalizations hit their highest levels since july uh mm -hmm. do you think or wondering what your thoughts are at least uh when it comes to the hospitalization going forward especially in the winter months do you think that we're going to be seeing that doomsday scenario where hospitals are overwhelmed or going to have to turn people away I, I, I think we are getting there. I think we are getting there. Uh, I think hospitals have been at uh, breaking point for almost the, uh, the last past uh, eight to nine months. So, uh, 
And uh, with the winter months coming, with, uh, of course, the flu coming into play, with pneumonia season coming into play, I, th- I think it's going to be a huge burden on the hospital system. So uh, in order to continue providing care, uh, I think we'd have to rely on other uh, modalities of treatment. Uh, can we treat these patients effectively at home? Uh, with home health agencies, or can we continue to treat in place in skilled uh, nursing facilities or assisted living facilities? So we're going to have to think outside the box.